Okay, so last time we learned how to use the diagonal trick to build something like this, an equirectangular perspective. So you have a, a rectangle, say a section of a wall, and we've learned how to use diagonals to multiply this rectangle and get copies of it adjacent to itself so that you get a wall that's evenly partitioned, okay, a wall of repeating elements. So um, we get a picture uh, that if we see in VR will look like this, okay. So you have your first element of the wall, the rectangle, and then we've built rectangles just the same size uh, side by side with it. And I told you last time that really you need to know these techniques because it's not obvious how uh, big these things should be in a rectangular perspective in order to look the same size when you see them in VR. Okay, but maybe you didn't believe me because maybe after it's done it seems like you could more or less guess how big this is. So I think uh, it's worth it to make um, a more dramatic example. And that you get by building up instead of building sideways. So suppose that instead of just having this wall here, we have a wall in the tower. So we want to multiply this rectangle up so that we get a tower right here. Let's say three stories high, okay? So how do we do that? It's the same principle as last time. Uh, and again, let me remind you that all of this can be done by hand uh, using tracing paper instead of a computer. I'm here using my, my program, uh, EkaSketch 360, which is a program for drawing equirectangular perspectives, but you can see the first tutorial and use the sliding grid method to do this by hand, say if you're urban sketching. Now, let me freehand here. We, we are going to do something like this. We have a rectangle, okay? If you were seeing this in orthogonal view, uh, you divide it in half. This we done last time. And if you want to multiply it up, this big rectangle, well, you just take a line from here through here, and you take a diagonal, and when it hits this vertical, you will have exactly doubled the rectangle. Okay, so all we have to do is do the same in perspective and using the sliding grid method or using uh, like a sketch in this case i can draw the equi rectangular segment between any two points so let me choose pressing n which is this point pressing m i choose this point oh actually this one which is the halfway point of this segment okay and now i take um, the equirectangular line that connects these two points and I prolong it until I hit this vertical here. Let me draw the vertical. Bigger brush here. Okay, let's extend it a little bit further because we're going to need it. So, a little bit to the side here. Okay, so um, this line is the perspective view of this line here, the line connecting these two points, which is the bottom left point and the middle point of the top edge of the rectangle. And I just take this line until it hits the vertical edge of the rectangle. And I get this point here. Now, to get the horizontal edge, I just take 
one point here, press N, and um, and I take a vanishing point right here, going to my right. Let me get this this right because this is important. And now I I take the construction line that comes from here through here. Okay, and it will go to the other vanishing point, but we don't need all this, so let me undo and just take this part here. Okay, and now I am telling you that this rectangle I've just drawn is this rectangle here. That is, it is equal in size to this one. Okay, and now I think you do believe me when I tell you that you need these perspective techniques to measure this kind of thing. I don't think you would guess just by eye that this is the right size to multiply this rectangle. And if you still think you actually could, well, let me prolong here the vertical to find the middle point here. And um, Okay, middle point of the wall. If I want another story, if I want another um, rectangle, the same size as this one, let me free draw this. Okay, press F. So I would now do the same here until I found the new intersection. Okay, so again, press N right here, choose one point at the bottom edge and one point here and just draw a line okay and now I get this point I take a vanishing point to my right do this a little bit bigger and I take this point here and now I just I could do this line here, okay, but I don't want all of this. I just do this part. Okay, and now I tell you, this little section here is the perspective image of a rectangle that's this size, exactly. Okay, and if you still think you could guess that, then let's do another copy further up. Well, let me prolong the vertical. I should have done the whole vertical, but okay. Just this little bit again. I'm trying to not to mess the drawing too much. Okay. So another point here, and another diagonal, and where it hits, I put a point here, I put a vanishing point on my right, and again I complete this once more, remember this is just this big line here, okay? But we just need this section. Okay, let's erase this part here. We don't need it. And now uh, let's see how this looks in VR. So let me just uh, say it's not this one, right? So let me save this. Just press S. Okay, and we have it here. And let's look at it with FSP Viewer. And, okay, so we have here the original wall. Here's the main rectangle. And now let's look up and you see how this rectangle is same size as this one and the next one same size as this one and so on going up to the zenith. Now, of course, 
you wouldn't say that by just looking at them here. Uh, let's clear the drawing a little bit. See this more clearly because the diagonals can get confusing. Uh, bigger brush, press plus to get a bigger brush for erasing. Press backspace to get the eraser working. You have all of the instructions here on the side, on the second window. Okay, so um, let me just erase this. Okay. Oops. Okay, good enough for our purposes. Let's save this. Uh, this always saves into the Mega Sketch main directory. Uh, with this, the name is a timestamp. You don't name the files. And so here we have it. Uh, open with FSP Viewer, which is a free viewer that you can get um, well, for, for free. Uh, I told you last time where to get it. So, okay. And here you have it. I think it's pretty convincing. Okay. And you have your wall and tower. And I think you will believe me when I say that it would be hard to guess how big these uh, intervals would have to be if you weren't using uh, these perspective constructions. So, you know, there's lots of ways of doing equirectangular perspective easily, uh, but I think it's useful and interesting to do it the hard way that is to understand the perspective. And of course remember that every construction we do, we could do it. We're doing it uh, in a way also the easy way here by, by using Active Sketch to draw the lines between two points easily. But uh, you could do it the even harder way, which I recommend. Uh, which press G, you have your grid, and you can use this sliding grid to find the diagonals. So, for instance, if you had these two points and you wanted to find the diagonal joining them, remember you can just use the grid to find the line that joins the two points, and it's a line between this. Uh, in this case, between this orange and this purple line, and you can just press F to free draw. Uh, it's a bit too big. And you could just free draw it, okay, using this sliding grid as, and actually I did it wrong here. Okay, uh, let me do this right. Uh, yes. Okay, so which is the line that joins this? It's a little bit above this orange line and certainly below this purple line. So you just guesstimate the line that is between these two references. Okay, and you can find the line joining two points. Uh, in this case, the case that we actually used, you would need a line joining this point and this point. So it needs to cross. And which is it? It's Is it this first purple line? No, it's between these two purple lines. Something like this, probably. 
okay so it would start right here below it would pass through this point and you can just follow it here and it would hit well more or less where we found it okay so you see you could do this by hand and as we have seen in our first video you can do it with tracing paper or pencil pencil on top of tracing paper with a grid below so um, see that first tutorial if you haven't yet but anyway i think it's pretty credible right now that you do need to understand the perspective in order to make such simple measurements as these from which you draw everything in equi rectangular perspective okay so next time we'll go over more uh, complex techniques of uh, perspective arithmetic this time using vanishing points in a more intelligent way than we've been doing up until now so um see you next time enjoy